Hey guys, it's Flip, and today's video is on this Mifar hitch mounted cargo carrier or tail basket as they call it. I got this off Amazon and I'll put a link under the video in the description if you want to check it out. And in this video, what we're going to do is unbox this and I'll show you what it comes with. Then we are going to assemble it and then I'm going to show you how to install it onto a receiver on the vehicle, which in my case is a Honda Odyssey. Then I'm going to load it up in the waterproof bag and we're actually going on a trip several states away. When I get back from that trip, I'm going to give you my thoughts on it and do a little review of how the product performed. Let's get into it. Alright, so I got everything out of the box and on a tarp, so hopefully I don't scratch it up. So let me show you what all it came with. First of all, you've got the waterproof bag that you can put your luggage in. Uh, you've got a little bag that you can carry that in came with some straps to hold that down and a lock that you can put on your zipper for security it came with eight little bolts five longer bolts a couple pins you've got the two pieces of the folding arm and you've got the two pieces of the basket which will all get bolted together came with a couple basic ratchet straps a cargo net that you can use to hold cargo down on the basket uh, it's got four little reflective stickers you can put on the back, a couple mounting plates. This is an anti-rattle bracket, which I'll show you how to put on in a second. And a couple little tools that I'm going to throw in the scrap metal bucket, because I'm going to use these. But you can use them if you really want. It also came with this one-page instructions and parts list. Uh, it's really just three steps to the instructions, but hopefully this video helps you out. Uh, then just a little card showing you what accessories it comes with. So first the instructions say to flip the basket upside down, so that's what we're going to do. So I don't think it matters what side is the front or the back, but you just want to take the end with the cap on it that keeps water out. You want to put that wherever you want the back to be, and then just line up these holes with the holes in the basket here. So now I'm going to attach both sides of the basket to the arm, so I'm going to use the long bolts for this. So I'm going to put that all the way through, then I'm going to put the flat washer, and then the lock washer, then the nut. And I'm just going to put all those in and hand tighten them until I have all the bolts in, then we'll go in and tighten them. Then you got two plates you put on the front and the back. One of them has the brand name on here if you want to put that on the back. Then I'm going to flip this back over to put the plates on. So now we're using the little bolts and again you're just going to go flat washer, then lock washer, then nut. And you kind of got to pick up this side of the basket to get these holes to line up. Then do the same thing with the plate on the other side. Then you can go ahead and tighten those nuts on the plate down. To do that, you will need a 13 millimeter socket on the nut and a flathead screwdriver to hold the bolt in place. Then you can flip this back over to make it easier to tighten up these nuts underneath. For these bolts, I'm going to use a 14 millimeter wrench to hold the bolt and then a 17 millimeter socket to torque it down. So now I'm going to put the angled hitch on here and you're just going to line these up with the holes and you're going to put a bolt in the back and then the pin towards the vehicle. The pin and the cotter pin goes through the hole. That was probably the only hard part of the process was getting the holes on the hitch lined up with the holes on the receiver just because it's heavy. Then you put this last pin in. And don't forget to tighten up this nut. This is a 17 millimeter wrench holding the bolt. 
and a 19 millimeter socket on the nut. Then we took a couple of the reflective stickers it came with and we put those on the back of the basket. Now if you want to fold the basket up, all you have to do is take out this pin right here. Then just fold it up. So once it's in the folded up position, you're just moving that pin from this hole down to this hole and that will hold the basket in the up position. Now what we're gonna do is put on this anti-rattle hitch tightener. As you can see, the hitch has a little bit of play in the receiver and that will rattle on you uh, once you start moving on the highway. So to stop that from rattling and to snug that up, we're gonna put on this hitch tightener. So basically you just put this U-bolt around the hitch like that and then this plate goes on underneath like that and you want the bend in the plate touching this part of the tube so we've got the u-bolt snug up against that flange around the tube we're going to tighten these nuts down with a 17 millimeter wrench now we've got that snugged up so as you can see We've taken all the play out of where that hitch goes into the receiver and that's not going to rattle. Also a good idea to bring that wrench with you on your trip. So if you need to tighten this up, you can. Well, we're headed out. We loaded up everything last night and then it stormed all night. So we're definitely going to see if this bag holds up as being waterproof or not because we got a lot of water. All right, guys, we made it to our destination, crossed several states and drove over 400 miles. And uh, this tail basket did great. Went through several uh, torrential downpours, um, rainstorms off and on the whole way, and no, had no issues. Of course, we're going to go ahead and open up and make sure everything's dry inside. But water was pooling up on top, so I'm assuming we're good to go inside uh no shifting or anything like that really couldn't even feel it or tell that it was on the vehicle um but i tied this down and strapped it in while it was dark so let me show you how we did that um, so it comes with eight tie downs and each one has a buckle on top and then a buckle at the bottom and those are attached to the bag so you just go around and put those eight tie downs uh install those then it comes with two ratchet straps. I just put both of those on just for extra security. It does come with a lock as well. I didn't put the lock on the zippers just because we didn't really stop. Went through a couple drive throughs but that was it on the way, so not too worried about that. Um, holds 500 pounds. This flap right here covers the zipper. And then these are Velcroed as well. So you kind of got a double layer protection right there. So. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and I'll show you what's inside, just to give you an idea of what we fit in here. We could have fit a little bit more, but I'll show you what we fit in here and we'll just check to make sure everything's dry. Just something I was curious about, uh, will the back of the van open with the carrier installed? And just to show you, it will with no problem. So that's pretty nice. All right, so it just started raining again. It's pretty much been raining all day. As you can see, we've got some raindrops on here again, but. I wanted to just open it up and we'll check and see if it's dry. And just to give you an idea what will fit in here. So it's looking like we're good and dry, but we got a pool bag, a pack and play, pack and play mattress, stroller, a couple scooters. Got my set of golf clubs in here, another little stroller, um, some skates. So decent amount of stuff in here, golf shoes, and probably could have fit more. Just first time using it, wanted to play a little bit on the safe side, but as you can see, plenty of room in this, and it's dry. All right, got this all loaded up for the second time, about to head home from our trip. 
and we definitely got a lot more in here uh, we're able to, to maximize the space a little bit better this time around got two full-size suitcases in here and a set of golf clubs and a pack and play and a bunch of other little small things so uh, been impressed with it so far gonna make the trek home and I'll give you some final thoughts after we get home all right guys got home from the trip last night so just wanted to give you some final thoughts and a review of the product um, so first of all I'll just say I think it's a, a good price for everything that you get with this bundle um, with the bag and the straps and everything it comes with I feel like it's a good value uh, second thing I feel like is that the bag is really high quality it's heavy duty um, it rained pretty much the whole way down on our trip and the whole way back and nothing was even damp with this bag it really keeps everything dry structurally i feel like it's very sound and sturdy and manufactured well there's no wobbling or shifting around um, when you're driving you really forget it's even back there because it doesn't make any noise or shift around or anything like that and there's no wind resistance since it's behind the vehicle but there are a couple of cons first of all let me show you there's a plastic cap on the end of this tubing right here and i wish they would have done that on the end of every piece of tubing because as you can see right here there's not one here and you can see it's already rusting inside from one trip and that's the case on really every piece of open-ended tubing there's a couple on that end and a couple on that end so i may rig up a way to cap off the ends of that tubing now let me put this down and i'll show you something else so while this is made pretty sturdy um, it is actually showing some rust through on several spots uh, which after one trip isn't great so um, you can see all along here on some of the welds you've got some rust um, as well as some more open ends of the tubing right here. What I'll probably do is put a piece of rubber hose around that and zip tie it um, or something like that just to enclose the ends of this tubing again. But you've just got some rust showing through, which really shouldn't happen after one trip if you've got a quality top coat on this. So I feel like maybe there was a little shortcut with the quality of the finishing coat. What I'll probably do is take a little wire wheel and hit these rust spots and put some rust-oleum on this um, if you want to see a video of how to do that i'll put a link to my video in the corner right now where i do this to some rusty weight plates and i'll show you that process and here it is i did decide to go ahead and knock the rust off and throw some rust-oleum on it so it's not the nicest looking thing in the world i just used a few leftover cans of rust-oleum spray paint i had laying around i think i even mixed a few different sheens together um, but not really too concerned about the looks, just trying to preserve it, and it's more about functionality. So overall, happy with the price and what it came with, uh, the sturdiness of it. Not great that I had to repaint it, um, but hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, please hit the like button for me and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.